I'm Dr. Stephen Davidson, the Sexual Integrity Coach located in Wilton Manors, Florida. Welcome to another episode of Adult Sex Education. This is part two of a two-part series about gay ghosting on social media. If you're not familiar with the term, ghosting refers to the concept of abruptly shutting down all communication with another person without explanation, then disappearing or blocking them on social media, including common dating and hookup apps. In the last video, I talked about why ghosting occurs, and today I'm going to talk about how to cope with it, how to minimize it, and even how to prevent it. I want to thank the subscriber, Johnny, who recommended the topic. He said he doesn't want to waste any more time with people who lead him on and then don't follow through. He doesn't understand why someone would do this, since it isn't something he would ever consider doing to someone else. If you didn't see part one of this subject, I encourage you to go back and watch it so you will be up to speed. There, I talked about some of the reasons people use these apps and that not everyone using them does so for the purpose of meeting anyone face to face. They're not as bothered by ghosting because they didn't really want to know you anyway. So, welcome to the second meeting of the official Order of Gag, Gays Against Gay Ghosting. First, let's talk about how to cope with the reality that if you use social media apps for dating or hooking up, it is very likely that you will encounter gay ghost. Though these apps are the most common means for how gay men identify and meet other gay men, they are also a platform for deception and aggression. Not everyone using the apps are nice guys interested in meeting other nice guys. These apps are also used for making drug deals, prostitution, scams, and a long list of other illegal activities. If someone ghosts or blocks you, don't take it personally. They're likely someone you don't really want to know anyway. They did ghost you after all, so that should tell you something about their character. Several months ago, I posted a video about celebrating rejection. I told you then that being rejected is like having weeds in your garden that pull themselves. When people drop out of your life, you don't have to waste more time trying to be with someone who doesn't want to be with you. This is true with ghosting too. It is frustrating and disappointing, but you would ultimately see the truth about them anyway. When you're not dependent on others for validation, you free yourself from the fear of rejection. If you have a lot of time on your hands and rejection doesn't bother you, then these apps might be worth your while. People sit in casinos dropping coins and slot machines for hours with no payout, and they leave the casino saying that they had a great time even when they're walking out with nothing. They keep going back because they are conditioned by the intermittent reinforcement of an occasional win. Dating and hookup apps also provide this same kind of intermittent reinforcement used by research psychologists to train lab rats. It will occasionally get you an enjoyable hookup or even a woof from someone you think is hot. The anticipation of the reinforcement raises norepinephrine levels in the brain, causing a sense of excitement and arousal, even if no positive reinforcement is actually delivered. The apps work for some people because they don't take them seriously. They use the apps for recreation and passing time. Occasionally, they hit a jackpot. Now, let's talk about how to minimize the likelihood of being ghosted if you are serious about meeting someone on one of these apps. People who really want to meet you will put forth an effort to make it happen. The sooner you transition them off the app to another platform, the better your chances. Suggest to them that you video chat with each other immediately. You can do this by FaceTime, Zoom, however you prefer. This gets them off the app and gets you their full attention. Better yet, suggest meeting them in a public setting. If they're serious, they will cooperate with you to negotiate a time and a place to meet. Doing this will put you in charge of the situation and will weed out a lot of folks who are not serious about meeting. And are you not ultimately trying to meet this person anyway? I suggest that you never use these apps to find emergency sex. Some men log on when they are lonely or horny and they have a sense of urgency to meet someone quickly and hook up soon. 
This only increases your frustration and disappointment when others waste your time with superficial banter or leading you on and then ghost you. If you're having a sex emergency, DIY, do it yourself, is more efficient and less frustrating than waiting on someone else to show up for your rescue. Lastly, I want to talk about how to prevent ever being ghosted on social media. Stick with me on this to the end. I know some of you have a short attention span and you want to click off soon, but hear me out. The way to prevent being ghosted on social media is to never use these apps. Uninstall every one of them, pretend it's 1980, and go out in the world and meet people face to face. You might be surprised to know that baby boomers, my generation, the generation born between 1946 and 1964, had more sex in their 20s and 30s than every generation that came after them. The main reason is because they didn't have access to social media at this sexually prime time in their lives. All of their encounters with potential sex partners happened in real time and face to face. Something else you might be surprised to know is that since the popularity of internet and social media dating apps, as well as easy access to endless pornographic images and videos, erectile disorder has increased in men in their 20s and 30s. More young men are being treated for erectile dysfunction due to sexual performance anxiety because they have less real-time experience with sex. They lack the social intelligence to negotiate and navigate sexual encounters with a live person in real time because they so seldom have real-time encounters. The majority of their socialization is virtual. Sexual performance anxiety is a type of social anxiety that comes from a lack of confidence in sexual situations. Avoidance only exacerbates the symptoms. The only means of gaining social intelligence is by practicing social interaction with live people in real time. Baby boomers also have better interpersonal skills because they didn't grow up hiding behind an avatar or fake profile. Their self-promotion happened in real time face to face. What you saw was what you got. Instead of relying on a picture and a profile narrative, people got a multi-dimensional experience of each other when they met face to face in real time. People didn't rely only on their profile pic. You got to experience their intelligence, their sense of humor, their personality. You got to smell them and touch them and kiss them and all the other sensual experiences that apps can never provide. Those real-life encounters are fundamental to basic primal sexual development and maintenance of a healthy sex drive, as well as the ability to form intimate bonds in relationships. So let's review. Use the app for what it is, knowing that ghosting is going to happen and it's part of the app experience. Leverage the app like a catalog to see who's available and what your options are. Then transition the other person off the app to a face-to-face -face experience. Or uninstall the apps, get off the sofa, get out of your house, and go out in the world and meet real people. Because isn't that why you're using the app to begin with? And it's why ghosting is so frustrating to you. In an upcoming video, I'm going to give you recommendations for places you can go to meet gay men face to face in real time. These are men who make an effort to show up in person and have real, not virtual encounters. You can't be ghosted because they're going to be right there in front of you and with their consent, you can reach right out and touch them. I'm Dr. Steven Davidson, the Sexual Integrity Coach. I hope you will like this video and subscribe to this channel. Please check out my website at sexualintegritycoach.com. There you'll find information about the services and workshops I provide, as well as links to both of my books, Sexual Integrity, Finding the Courage to Be Yourself, as well as Peaceful Mind, Peaceful Life, The Guidebook to Happiness.